you buy good quality tomatoes you do not play with them if you get good quality tomatoes you're supposed to cook chicken tikka masala i mean you can cook paneer or chicken hi welcome my name is chef ranveer brar and let's cook paneer tikka masala after the music calling and action You know, the first thought is that with the same recipe, you can also get a fair idea of how to cook a paneer tikka recipe. And then you obviously can add this amazing gravy and cook a paneer tikka masala for yourself. The third bit is that this is a mild spicy curry, which means if you have kids at home, this is a perfect meal for kids. First, let's prepare the gravy and then marinate the cottage cheese. You could also use butter, you could use ghee. And remember, if the quality of tomatoes is good, then your recipe will automatically be amazing. Quite like the quality of our relationships is proportional to the quality of our life. Here I'm using four tomatoes of small to medium size for 400 gram cottage cheese. The quantity of tomatoes does not matter, but the quality does. You could use five tomatoes, you could use three and a half. Now you add dry red chilies, cardamom and tomatoes. add the garlic you can also add red onions as well as white onions but here because of the paneer i'm going to use white onions so the flavor becomes sweet and mild if the kitchen order ticker in the us has etm written on it you know what it indicates the customer has ordered the most popular dish which is chicken tikka masala Now you add two medium onions if you're using four to five medium tomatoes. Now it's time to add the spices. The dish can be cooked in a number of ways, but I prefer sauteing the ingredients. I mean, you could directly boil the ingredients, but it won't taste better. And then you'll come back to me and say, Ranveer, why didn't you tell us before? Look at the color and the flavor of the dish. If you wish to cook this like this, then do saute the ingredients. Solely boiling the ingredients will not lend the same flavor. All right. Now add salt. The gravy is done. Let's add with the marination of paneer tikka. To cook the paneer tikka, you will need the marination for the marination first add the red chili powder this one is for color not spicy you could replace it with non-spicy paprika powder it's a cheat but you can use garam masala for more flavor pinch of asafoetida or hing now you pour some mustard oil salt ginger garlic paste and add some hung curd hung yogurt in case you get greek yogurt you could use that hung curd is typically curd or yogurt that has been put in a muslin cloth or in a strainer for a long time and maybe pressed from the top now to this you add roasted gram flour if you do not get roasted gram flour you could use regular gram flour Now you can marinate the cottage cheese as well with some ginger garlic and red chili powder to get a nice vibrant red color. It will not add any flavor to it, don't worry. Now time to add the cashew nuts. If you feel that the nuts are stale, you can boil them in hot water or just put some hot boiling water on top of your nuts. If the cashew nuts are fresh, no problem. You could use them just like that. If not, do boil them. Now I've used approximately 6 to 8 whole cashew nuts. You could use up to 12. Let it cool down until then. Let's go back to preparing the tikka. Add clarified butter. Now you can also barbecue these tikkas using the skewers. 
you can use an oven or an air fryer as well i'm cooking them in a pan and then i'll smoke them later for some magic Now blend the mixture as finely as possible and strain it for an amazing texture for a gravy. The gravy is almost done. Now when it gets blended, I'm going to prepare the masala. The dish is obviously called the paneer tikka masala, so you'll need to prepare the paneer tikka and the masala. The recipe of the masala is very simple. You will need onions and tomatoes. chicken tikka masala will not be the same without its masala if you add paneer tikka or chicken tikka directly into the gravy it's not going to be the same thing don't do that cuz then it will just show that you don't pay attention to what i say remember what i said the masala is as important as everything else Now you add the bay leaf, chopped onions. Now you soften the ingredients using clarified butter and butter. Do not make them brown, right? You could use white onions here as well for juiciness. I prefer using red onions. It's just an Indian thing. I've used white onions in the gravy to make sure that the color isn't hampered. And I'm going to use red onions here. Completely your call. Easy peasy, no rocket science. Now you add the ginger garlic paste into the onions. The most common mistake that I often notice in the recipe videos is that people add ginger garlic paste immediately after adding cumin seeds into the oil. Ginger garlic paste is fine, right? That's why it'll burn if you add directly to the oil. Always add your ginger garlic paste after adding the onions. You can add crushed ginger garlic. directly into the oil but the paste after the onions ha huh, ranveer has told you everything now time to add the spices add the red chili powder for color coriander powder and add some turmeric do not cook the spices for a very long time you don't want the chili to lose its color spices have an optimum cooking time that's what you will find with trial and error now you add the tomatoes after slightly cooking the spices the water released by the tomatoes will halt the cooking process of the spices slightly cook the coriander add the prepared paneer tikka into it if you're cooking chicken tikka follow the same process if you want to see a quick and delicious chicken tikka recipe You can search chicken tikka by Ranveer Brar or you can watch the chicken tikka pulao recipe that's another amazing recipe First now you add chicken or paneer tikka to make sure that the yogurt used for the marination is cooked well After adding the tikka add the prepared gravy into the masala this is when the dish really starts coming together all the elements are fused together and it will create an amazing dish all the flavors will blend together all the connections will be made only when you cook them together The most important ingredient of this recipe is cream because it just brings it together. If you think cream is too rich or if you don't have cream you could also add white butter. Now you add some honey or sugar to balance the sourness of the tomatoes and the sourness of the yogurt. White butter is a good substitute for cream. Now that richness though is very important. The dish will remain incomplete without it. Mm you see the gravy looks velvety that velvetiness has come because of the addition of cream and butter
Also, if you want that cooked in a restaurant feel, cream is a good idea. Now let's talk about the origin of chicken tikka masala and the restaurant that invented it. Paneer tikka masala as well, it's the same. The most discussed topic in the world is that the national dish of Britain is chicken tikka masala or CTM. Well, if it's the national dish of Britain, then what is the story behind it? There are multiple stories and theories. One of the stories is that chef from Bangladesh served chicken tikka tossed in a tomato gravy to a British customer and named it chicken tikka masala. I know, Indians are going to get mad about this, right? Well, this is just one of the theories. The other theory is that a chef hurriedly served Campbell's tomato soup, mixed it with some fresh cream, added chicken tikka into it and called it chicken tikka masala. There's another theory which I feel is believable which is Mrs. Balbir Singh's Indian cookbook is very popular amongst our soldier families. The book was released in 1961. Chicken tikka masala is a modified version of a dish that is present in that book. Now, the Indians living in Britain cook food from ingredients which are available in Britain and this book traveled there along with a lot of ex-servicemen who settled in London. This recipe got created. Right? Because most initial restaurants were mom and pop restaurants. So they made a milder version of butter chicken and called it chicken tikka masala. Well, the beauty of the dish is its subtleness and its mildness. It's sweet, savory, and not spicy, but subtle. Chicken tikka masala is the most popular Indian dish in the US restaurants as well. I mean, you could easily say this is the dish that has captured the imagination of people world across. All right, now let's come back to the gravy. Let's add some water to it. If it's too thick, the gravy should be thick enough to coat the back of your spoon. Now we're done with the garnish as well. Now, if you want me to do a masterclass on styling your food, please let me know in the comments below because what looks good sells well. On the contrary, it's quite opposite in my case. Anyways, do share and subscribe. Others ask for votes, I ask for likes. Thank you very much. This is how this game works. Look forward to seeing you again with another recipe.